Thank you, Steve. That was a new beginning. We'll introduce you guys a little bit later. Thank you for that. Welcome, everyone, to this year's Clergy Appreciation Luncheon. I'm Joseph Palmer, the Oklahoma Regional Manager for Bot Radio Network, and I want to welcome all of you who are on the front lines of the asymmetrical warfare we find ourselves in, this spiritual battle. Thank you all for being here. Our hope is that we will love on you a little bit in the coming minutes, honor you, and make you feel special. And everybody, everybody in the room, those who are uh, on the front lines as pastors and the support staff and, and wives and families and everybody, we want you all to feel special. So thank you for coming. Now I wanted to share a minute. You know, one of the things that Bot Radio Network does, it's written into our DNA almost, is we come alongside. And that's one of the things I, I want to bring up so that you all understand you have a resource in Bot Radio Network. So we're not a, a church, but we come alongside churches. That's just one of the things we do. Well, how do we do that? Well, through the foolishness, you know, the Lord is uh, pleased to save souls through the foolishness of preaching, right? 1 Corinthians one twenty one, paraphrase a little bit. And we know that to be true. So what happens if you take, what happens if you curate the, some of the best Bible teachers, preachers in the country and play it on the radio for free to anyone that wants to hear it? Well, sounds like we're, we're maybe multiplying the foolishness there uh, to everyone's benefit. So, so here's the deal. <clears throat> you, as a pastor, have resources available to you. So what happens, you, you, you turn on Bot Radio Network in your car, and maybe you've got David Jeremiah greeting you in the morning on a regular basis. And I'm telling you my story as I'm telling you this. So it's like you get in the, in the car, ah, oh, Good morning, David. Good morning, John. Good morning, Chuck Swindoll. Oh, wow, what a great message. I'm driving to work, you know, you hear that. And over time, I find that I'm being discipled by these great men of God, and some of them are already with the Lord, like J. Vernon McGee. May I say to you, may God richly bless you, my beloved. It doesn't even matter. And, and what if everyone in your church tuned in and was renewing their mind constantly with some of the best preaching in the country. Would you like to have, is that the kind of people you would like to have as members of your church? And so, not only that, but as you're listening, you're hearing these great preachers and teachers, and I know I'm not perfect. I'd really love to have a life coach, somebody that was showing me my blind spots showing me an area that I wasn't even aware of that I might be able to improve. So you listen to these guys, you get an idea. So we've had one pastor of a church in Stroud has told us, you know, I don't think a Sunday goes by where Adrian Rogers didn't add to or change my sermon on the way to church. And we're a resource. That's, you know, part of what we're there for. So you can take uh, instruction from these guys or counseling how to how do you counsel somebody in various situations well we've got focus on the family family life today uh, family talk with James Dobson all talking about those kinds of things well what's going on in the world well we've got Tony Perkins Washington watch we've got wall builders live how many of the media out there are giving you the news from a biblical perspective from a biblical worldview which we know from Barna is in short supply these days and that's another thing that Bot Radio Network can do is we're out there projecting a biblical worldview 24-7. All you have to do is hit the button on your car radio. And here's the key to unlock that. We have put these, a, a, st a stack of them, I don't know how many they put in, in everybody's bag here that you'll get on the way out. And if, you, if we didn't, uh, feel free to grab more. If you feel like, well, I want to give this to my whole Sunday school class or my whole church, whatever, fine, we've got plenty. We would love for you to do that. I use these like tracks, quite honestly. So, enough about us. And we want to be a service to you. Oh, one more thing. Do you have an event at your church? Would you like to let people know in, uh, about it? Well, why not do a little outreach through Bot Radio Network? We did that for uh, an associate of Paul Blair here recently. But we've got a thing called the KQCV Community Minute. 
Uh, you got an event? Let us know. We'll put it on there. All right, very good. So without further ado, I want to introduce, speaking of world-class preachers and teachers, and hopefully, you know, they'll be able to carry the weight of their heads as they come up the stairs here in a minute, but two of our awesome programmers on Bot Radio Network, Paul Blair and Dan Fisher, Exploring the Word, heard 3 p.m. every day on 800 a.m. and four other FM frequencies. Uh, they're going to be our MC today, so without further ado, I'd like to welcome Paul Blair and Dan Fisher, co-pastors of Fairview Baptist Church, now Liberty Church, I hear. Thank you, Paul. Thank you, Joseph. Well, it's good to see you. Always great to be here at the Bot Radio Pastors Appreciation Luncheon. I think we've been a part of this for probably 15 years or so now. 40 or 50, yeah, maybe. Yeah, it seems like yeah, it, or like to that. the audience. I remember Mr. Bot actually back in around 2007, 2008. Of course, we had grown up with Bot Radio. You know, that was, uh, yep. we lived in one of those old homes. My parents were Depression era folks, and we, uh, we had a home that had the PA system throughout. <laughs> and every day it was on from 8 in the morning until 5 in the afternoon with yeah. Bot Radio. And, of course, Jay Vernon McGee on at lunch. Sure. And of course, Mr. Bot's voice was so distinct, you could just recognize it yep. at any point. Yep. And then about 2007, he actually called the house, called my mom, looking for me. Why? He, he wanted uh, wanted us to be on the air. Oh. oh so it oh. was, uh, it was a, 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 a quite an honor to hear from Dick Bott and having the invitation to be yeah. on radio. Of course, it, we've been proud to be a part of Bott Radio for uh, nearly 20 years now. And Joseph is right. If you've got an event that's going on, uh, it's a, they are there to support. Uh, they will help promote revivals. In fact, we helped do a revival at Danny Gander's church not too long ago down at the lane in Dell City. And they came and set up shot and gave it a lot yeah. of airtime. So we appreciate the relationship that we have enjoyed with, with Bot Radio. You bet. Well, my name is Paul Blair. I have been the senior pastor at Fairview Baptist Church for the last 21 years. And then four years ago, my good friend, Dan Fisher, who has been a long time. How long have you been in ministry? Too long. Too, <laughs> how long have you 47 been? 47 years. Dan started, started preaching when I was 16. Vocational pastor since yeah. you were 16. Yeah, yeah. well, 22 when yeah. I was actually vocational. Well, we became good friends about 15 or so years well, ago. Well, don't stress that good okay. too much. Well, Just we became friends. acquaintances about 15 years ago. Yeah. And then four years ago, we came over and we've been working Upgraded together. the place. I mean, yeah, yeah. <laughs> saved so. the ministry. Uh, we have a satellite now in Orlando. We've got Liberty Church Orlando and Liberty Church of Edmond. Yep. And it is an honor for both of us to be here and be a it part is. of this program. It is. Would you introduce our, our you uh, pastor that's going to be leading in prayer? Well, my name is Dan Fisher, and it, it's an honor to uh, work with uh, Bot Radio. Gosh, Joseph is just incredible. Of course, Paul Sublett, who's now in heaven, is a good, good friend. And we worked with Paul over all those many years. In fact, he was a key part of reclaiming America for Christ way back when it was reclaiming Oklahoma for Christ. Yeah. And then Joseph has picked up the ball and, and he has been tremendous. In fact, Joseph has been a real asset to us in our Liberty Pastor training camps that we do around the country where we train pastors how to engage the culture. And Joseph, man, you've been such a great part of that. So thank you for all that you do. We, we appreciate you. Hey, and we want to thank Putnam City Baptist Church. Isn't this a great Beautiful facility? facility. Beautiful wow, facility. Wow, thank you thank so you much for uh, allowing us to come in here and mess the joint up. So we appreciate so much. Well, we're going to invite um, an old friend of mine, stress old friend of mine. Uh, Bill Hulse is the pastor here at Putnam Baptist Church, and we are so honored uh, to have Bill here as a part of this and so uh, honored to uh, have them allow us to be here. So, Bill, would you come and uh, pray for us, pray for the food, and pray for this event? Would you guys welcome Bill Hulse, the pastor of this church here as he comes? I knew Bill way back when he was a fledgling youth pastor, and now he's the big dog. So, whatever, man, whatever. it's good to see you, buddy. That's good to see you as well. And Thank you for being part of this day. I really appreciate Bot Radio caring about not just our community, but our pastors and ministers. And so I hope today you'll be greatly encouraged. Anything we can do to serve you, uh, we want to do that. But let's ask the Lord's blessing on this time. Would you join me as we pray? Lord, I come to you this day in the powerful name of Jesus, our Lord, our Savior, our Shepherd. And God, I would pray your richest blessings on this time, that it would bring glory and honor to your name, that it would encourage the hearts that are here today. God, I thank you for the calling that you give us to be shepherds in your, to your flock and in your kingdom. God, it is an awesome, awesome thing. And it's also a fearsome thing. It is 
uh, a challenging time as well. And so, God, I would pray like Jabez did, that you would bless my brothers and sisters, that you would change us into your image, that we would not be so worried about uh, what we do, but, Lord, we would allow you to be the Lord and the master of our journey as we shepherd others and theirs. God, I also pray that you would expand our territory in this region of the United States and beyond. Lord, that you would give us favor uh, with a world that desperately needs you. And then, God, we would pray that you would keep us from all evil, that your hand would be with us. We don't just ask for your hand to bless us and pour out things from heaven. We need your hand to lead us and to guide us. So, God, do that today. Be with Ross as he brings your word. Be with all those that will inspire us and challenge us today. And may we receive it in our hearts. Bless this food. I thank you for those who've prepared it and who are now serving us. God, may all this be for your glory. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Well, in case you noticed the wardrobe, I had to dress up since this was a formal event. And uh, since the bears are back, anybody who saw my bears play last night, there is life. There is a pulse again, once again, in the city now, of Chicago. Now, let me say this. He says his bears. Yes. He doesn't use the possessive whenever they lose. This is true. He just it's says the bears. Just said those, yeah, usually with some other expletive. <laughs> <you> know, uh, <laughs> There's but, other words that go no, along actually, with it. Actually, they look great again last night. Finally figured out a way they to use did. that talented quarterback. And, and, of course, on Saturdays, football's been this. pretty good well. <laughs> so I've got my Oklahoma State sport coat on. <laughs> so we are flying the colors as formal as we can possibly be. Uh, for this festive occasion. <laughs> it is now our honor to introduce the musical portion of this program. Yeah. And they'll be serving lunch while music is playing. Just enjoy lunch. And then we'll, uh, again, pick up with the program in about 45 minutes. But Steve Kern has been a longtime yes. friend. Yes, he Back is. when we first started Reclaiming Oklahoma for Christ and Reclaiming America for Christ, we became very close friends with Steve and Sally Kern. Yeah, and, I had, and I had the privilege of serving with Sally in the legislature. The legislature so I saw her at work. At work. Yeah. Well, Steve pastored <laughs> Olivet Baptist for many, many years. Now he is enjoying the fruits of retirement and was so, well, semi-retirement. But we were so glad that he was able to, while Dan and I were out of town last week, we were in Coeur d'Alene, Idaho, doing our last Liberty Pastors training camp of the year. Steve came and taught Bible in our Wednesday night fellowship, yeah. so we certainly appreciate his friendship. And now, welcome, uh, what is it? Uh, new a new beginning. New beginning. A new yeah. beginning. Amen. God bless you guys. Give them a hand as they uh, minister to us while we enjoy our meal. Thank enjoy you. your meal. Well, we thank, uh, we're uh, thankful to Bot Radio for inviting us and letting us come and uh, share with you. New Beginnings, uh, we call ourselves New Beginnings because all of us have been in other groups and this is our newest beginning in a new group. <laughs> so, so anyway, of course you know Steve Kern. This is uh, Steve Myers, he's a member out at First Baptist Piedmont. And Bob Boyer, he's uh, a member over at um, Cherokee Hills. And then Cody Boyer, his nephew, is uh, out at Crossings, right? Crossing Community. And then Diane Ellings. Where do you go to church, Diane? I go to Good News Church in Yukon. Good News yeah. Church in Yukon. Yeah, I never can remember that. That's okay. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Anyway, we're going to sing a song for you. How many of you can't wait for Jesus to come? Amen. Are you getting ready for Jesus to come? Amen. Well, this song is called Let's Ride, and uh, it's taken from Revelation chapter 19, verse 13 and 14, where it says that when Jesus comes again, he's going to come again on a white horse, and he's going to have this huge army with him, and uh, they're all going to be dressed in white linen, and they're all going to be on white horses. Well, we've all been fools for Jesus In the eyes of foolish men That's the way the lost world sees us That's the way it's always been Yes, the lost love to demean us Though they're dead in all their sin But one day we'll ride with Jesus On that day he comes again We're going to on our white horses in white robes to ride with him each white horse will be made ready as the charge will soon begin we're going to on our white horses and 
Everyone, please continue enjoying your lunch and your dessert and a little fellowship. We're going to play a little video here now uh, about Bot Radio Network, and then we're going to segue into the rest of our production. So thank you for your attention. It was 1962. President John F. Kennedy announced to the nation that Soviet missiles were in Cuba. John Glenn became the first American to orbit the Earth. Sam Walton opened the first Walmart store. The Kansas City Chiefs were still known as the Dallas Texans. The Supreme Court abolished prayer in our public schools. And in the same year, Bot Radio Network was born. Celebrating 60 years of broadcast service, Bot Radio Network's purpose remains the same and is more important than ever to help strengthen your faith, strengthen your family, and strengthen your walk with the Lord with quality Bible teaching, Christian news, and information 24-7. Radio is an effective and powerful medium to spread the Word of God. During tough times, people turn to Christian radio more than ever to find hope and healing from God's Word. This past year, Nielsen reported that radio listening increased 10%, and Inside Radio reported that Christian radio had record-setting results with the highest level of listener loyalty in 17 years, leading all commercial radio formats. While the COVID pandemic disrupted lives, our listeners turn to our Bible teachers for trusted answers from the Word of God. I really enjoy your station. Every morning I can count on a message from the Word before I go into the COVID unit where I work. Thanks for being there for God's children. It began in Kansas City. Ladies and gentlemen, the sound of KCCV, Kansas City's Christian voice. Let me tell you the rest of that story. Pretty Shirley Patterson met handsome Dick Bott when he was a Bible college student in St. Paul. They dedicated themselves and their subsequent marriage to Christian service. That dedication led them uphill, a long, long way uphill. But with faith and patience and perspiration, eventually that uphill road led to ownership and management of this radio station where from sunrise to sunset, a wide spectrum of Christian broadcasts evangelizes this marketplace of two million people. My dear, dear Dick Bott, beloved friend, you have been used of God, along with your wonderful family, to have an impact upon the whole Christian world. God bless you for all you mean to me and to multitudes. With 120 stations, Bot Radio Network harnesses the power of radio to spread the gospel. And in the midst of a new age for audio media, we've expanded our reach our mobile app for iPhone and Android makes it easy to listen for people on the go. We reach people at home on smart speakers like Amazon Echo, Apple HomePod, and Google Home. They also hear our format of quality Christian talk radio on iHeartRadio, TuneIn, and even on TV apps like Apple TV and Roku. Each media platform allows us to reach more and more people across the nation and around the world. Here's Tuani, a BRN listener in Brazil. This will be a blessing from God in your life, without a shadow of a doubt. This is a thought that comes to mind. Every time I think of the station, it is a blessing to your life. All of the preachers and teachers speak only the truth of God's Word. It, it has been really a blessing to my life. Every day. <laughs> Today, the world is in desperate need of physical and spiritual healing. We salute the many quality broadcast ministries who are on the air with us partnering to proclaim the Word of God faithfully and boldly in these days. You know, the Word of God, it's the same yesterday, today, and forever. We've been praying for a Great Awakening style revival to sweep across our land and around the world and we want Bot Radio Network to be part of that revival. 
New broadcast ministries we're delighted to introduce this year include Worship and the Word with Robert Morris, Senior Pastor of Gateway Church in Dallas, Unlocking the Bible with Colin Smith, Senior Pastor of the Orchard Evangelical Free Church in Chicago, Living a Legacy with Pastor and Conference Speaker Crawford Loritz, and Allen Jackson Ministries with Pastor Allen Jackson of World Outreach Church in Middle Tennessee. And we now broadcast Core Christianity with Pastor Adriel Sanchez live so our listeners can call in and get answers to their questions about the faith. During lockdown, many of our broadcast ministry partners develop special timely resources in audio and video to give our listeners hope and confidence. We created a special digital platform to present these biblical messages of hope to our listeners. I love Bot Radio Network. You have been family and company during all this COVID stuff. Please don't ever change your mission. Don't ever compromise truth. And I pray you never go away while we're all still here on earth. While many of our events were virtual this year, we were able to host some wonderful gatherings, including the Fresno Prayer Breakfast with keynote speaker Ann Graham Lotz in California. We hosted huge pastor appreciation luncheons in Oklahoma City with Dr. Stephen Rummage and in St. Louis, Missouri with David Barton, host of Wall Builders Live. Also in St. Louis, we hosted a packed crowd at Grace Church with David Barton as our keynote speaker. We welcomed Jim Daly to Omaha, Nebraska for the Assure Women's Center Imagine Banquet with Rich Pott as MC. Thousands found hope and healing as we welcomed the Franklin Graham Route 66 God Loves You Tour to the Worldwide Technology Raceway near St. Louis, Missouri, the Ozark Empire Fairgrounds in Springfield, Missouri, and the Oklahoma State Capitol in Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. In Rapid City, South Dakota, we welcomed Will Graham, who delivered a powerful message of soul winning and discipleship at the Black Hills Celebration. On our BRN apps for mobile, Apple TV, and Roku, we broadcast live Focus on the Families Sea Life 2021 at the American Airlines Center in Dallas, Texas. And just before the Supreme Court heard the pro-life case from Mississippi, we broadcast live the Pray Together for Life prayer meeting from Jackson, Mississippi with Tony Perkins, president of the Family Research Council and host of Washington Watch. We also broadcast the National Day of Prayer live from Washington, D.C., linking prayer groups across the nation through our broadcast network. And live from the D.L. Moody Center in Northfield, Massachusetts, we broadcast the powerful evangelistic preaching of Dr. Michael Youssef, host of Leading the Way. Most of all, we thank our many listeners who depend on Bot Radio Network every day to help them grow spiritually and apply their faith in their everyday life. During this time of global isolation and loneliness, the gospel of Jesus brings hope, help, salvation, and healing. I fell away from the Lord and was heading down a bad path. I'm a taxi driver and I had a near-death experience on the interstate. After it happened, I turned on Bot, and Dr. Jeremiah was there talking about in the book of James, and he led me back to the Lord that day, and I've been a faithful listener since. Thank you, Bot Radio. For six decades, Bot Radio Network has kept that vision fresh, and with listeners on six continents, BRN is helping to fulfill the Great Commission by broadcasting the Word of God to the people of God in this generation. So our marketing team spent some time putting that together. I figured out a show it every now and then. So thank you for listening to that. So the Bible says render honor where honor is due, and we want to do that here today, so we have a, a few public officials with us uh, that I want to recognize, and I want to start with State Senator Shane Jett. Thank you for being here. You'll hear more from him later. And we also have a, a couple of former legislators. We have former State Representative Sally Kern is with us today. Sally, would you stand up? I can't. Where are you? 
All right. Very good. Thank you. And we also have former state representative Dan Fisher. Thank you, Dan. I'd also like to recognize the people that actually do the work to put this on, and that would be our staff here at Bot Radio Network in our Oklahoma office. So if the Bot Radio Network staff would stand for a minute and be recognized, everybody, yes, thank you. They do all the work. I just stand up here and make noise. I'd also like to especially recognize many of you in this room know her, deal with her on a fairly regular basis. So one of our very valued Bot Radio Network employees, this is her last week. She's retiring after this week. And so Debbie Merritt, if you would stand up. And I would like all of you to, to show appreciation to Debbie for 14 years of service with Bot Radio Network. Or I'm not sure where she went. She got a phone call. I'll tell her all about it. Oh, <laughs> very good. All right, thank you. Uh, so I'm going to turn it over now to my associate, Quentin Sawatsky, because uh, guess what? All this food and everything, we do not have a uh, benefactor with deep pockets that uh, paid for all this. It's paid for by the sponsors that are out there, and Quentin's going to go over that. So yeah, Debbie uh, got a phone call. Somebody was wanting to buy advertising, and so I, you know, it's, it's important. They, you got so. Um, there is a group out, a singing group out. Um, you may have heard of them, We the Kingdom. I don't know if you've heard of the group. They have a song out. That, there's a verse in one of the songs that says, "I may not know what a day may bring, but I know who brings the day." Amen. And His mercies are new every morning, right? Um, so I wanted to say thanks to our sponsors, but first of all, I want to say thanks to you. I appreciate your ministries, and I appreciate what you do. There was a Facebook comment, uh, Bot Radio put out a, a Facebook post about this, about this and trying to get people to register, and somebody made the comment, is this really a, an appreciation lunch, or are you just trying to sell us something? I want you to know this is truly an appreciation lunch. We appreciate what you do. I started school at OBU to go into the ministry. I have an idea of what you guys do. I worked in church. I grew up in this church all my life, but I know what you do. Times are rough. Times are difficult, so I appreciate extremely what you do. Thanks to Pastor Bill Hulse and Putnam City Baptist Church again for hosting us uh, and letting us use their facility. Thanks to the tech team, Alex and you guys back there uh, helping out. Thanks to Catering Creations uh, out of Nosh Restaurant in Moore. They do amazing catering and great food. Um, give them a hand of appreciation for that. <laughs> By the way, they have about they have a small event center, so if you guys want to do like a Christmas party or something at Nosh Restaurant and more, they have a little room about, seats about 75, so keep that in mind. Also, I wanted to give a shout out to, they're not a sponsor, but I wanted to give a shout out to Higher Plain Christian Academy. These were the young adults that were helping serve us and everything, so give them a hand of appreciation. Thank you guys, appreciate that. So our sponsors, uh, our gold sponsors include Warren Stowe. He owns the um, Geico office in South Oklahoma City. And when I uh, told him about what this lunch was about and asked him if he'd be willing to serve as a sponsor, he was all in because he feels it's important to have a strong pastor in the pulpit preaching the truth of God's word every week. And so uh, he was all excited to be here, so... The, Geico, the gecko will be back in out there whenever we leave, so get a picture if you want. Uh, and then visit with Warren about your home auto and life insurance if you have any questions about that. Impact Construction Group, um, another people, a group of people that when I told them about this lunch, they were all in from the get-go. They, um, they jumped at the chance. The owner, much of the uh, management staff are all 
in ministry or have been in ministry. So they know what you guys are going through. And whenever it gives them a unique perspective on when churches have hail damage or roof damage or something like that, they know what you're facing. They know you as a pastor or staff don't have time, ability, and shall we say sometimes headspace to deal with insurance companies and all of that. Impact Roofing and Construction can take care of that for you and will make sure that your church and you are not taken advantage of by people that like to do that when storms come. And as you noticed when you came in, we have a security team this year. Now, I know that may be a little odd, it may be a little awkward, but shall I say, we are in troubling times. There are threats out there. And they will continue to increase. Daniel Hurd and his team with Omega Security want to get in front of that threat before it happens so that your services are safe, your facility is safe, and you and your people are safe. And when we visited with Daniel um, talking about this whole event and trying to get things up, one of the things he said about his team stuck with me, especially in light of some recent school shootings. He said, When it goes bang, we run to the bang. We don't run and hide and wait. Now that doesn't necessarily, that bang doesn't necessarily mean active shooter. That could also mean medical emergency. They're there to take care of it. They're in charge. They know who to call. They know what to do. So please visit with um, Dan and his team at Omega Security right outside the door. They'd be glad to help provide a free assessment of your church and what they can do. Our silver sponsors include Southern Nazarene University's professional and graduate studies uh, with master's degrees, programs in counseling, psychology, business administration, and leadership. Service Professionals, Inc., they clean carpets, tile, and grout. Uh, Hopefully you won't need them for their other services like cleaning and restorations after a fire or flood, but they do that too. But uh, they clean carpets, tile, and grout. Professional, let's see, pros make ready, sanitizing services can help keep your campuses germ free. Something as we reach flu season, you might want to keep in, keep in mind, um, talk, talk with them, especially if you have kids, a lot of kids in your church or an older congregation, they can help sanitize your facilities. A&T Mechanical works on heat and air issues. They also do plumbing. They have a special right now that will benefit your church. So be sure and stop by and check them out. Senior Care Referral Services works with families to find the right senior care community for their loved ones and their budget. So if you have a family, like my my parents, you know, my dad had Alzheimer's. We didn't know, my sister and I didn't know where to start looking for a community for my dad. I wish I'd have known about Senior Care Referral Services because they could have helped me out. And it doesn't cost me anything or the family. So visit with them. And then First Light Home Care offers full home care and caregiver services. So if you have family members recovering from surgery or you have a senior adult that needs uh, a little extra help at home, they uh, are people that can help you with that. So those are our sponsors. Please stop by and visit with them and tell them you appreciate them sponsoring and talk with them about how they can help you or how they can help members of your church. And again, thank you for what you guys do. We appreciate you. So in terms of rendering honor where honor is due, in a sense, we're also here to honor some specific individuals. And if Paul and Dan are on their way up to help me to do that, we have three awards that we would like to give away. All right, first of all, we'll recognize a uh, local Christian businessman, uh, a, just a citizen, and then a pastor as well. So the first award is for the Christian Businessman Award. In sharing Christ in the marketplace at every opportunity to the point of writing your own gospel tracks, being a strong example of a godly witness in the business community, having made an impact on our city in giving that which the Lord has given him back to the community, we honor the generous businessman, Gary Roberts. Gary Roberts. Give Gary a round of applause. Come on up, Gary. 
There was a nice cash award that went along with this, but Dan and I are keeping that, but we will give you this plaque. Cash? You didn't say anything about cash. <laughs> I don't know how uh, much I'll have to say, but uh, I thought I, you know, there's nothing more personal than just sharing your personal witness with, with people. Uh, 1972, February the 6th, after a long journey of uh, trying to do things my way, uh, one cold February evening, not, February 6th, 1972, um, God's Spirit, I know now, didn't know what it was at that time, uh, touched my heart, and uh, tears began to flow down my cheeks, which I would never have allowed to happen publicly prior to that time, but uh, I suddenly, it was just between me and God, and I heard, I felt a voice within me saying, you're going to die if you don't receive this. And so I walked forward in Mayfair Baptist Church uh, and gave my life to, to Jesus. Um, That's good. So if, if you're counting, uh, I celebrated my 50th uh, anniversary with the Lord uh, in February. So uh, it's amazing. Uh, I'm thankful I had uh, somebody, my best friend and my bride of almost 50 years. We'll be celebrating that on March 26th. Uh, Johnny is in the audience. Honey, stand, go ahead and stand up. <laughs> it's, you, don't, uh, you don't succeed without a, a, a good partner, and she's my best friend and partner. Um, I don't feel like that if you really knew me like the Lord knows me, you'd probably think, well, what's he doing up there? But thank God for his grace. Uh, because 25 years after I received Christ and quite frankly led, uh, went through a lot of frustration, uh, kind of looked at people that were Christians, that walked the Christian life, pastors, people that that you normally admire, and I, 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 I couldn't equal that. I couldn't live up to that, and I felt like a failure. And one evening, driving back from Dallas, Texas, I, um, it was, I was by myself in the car. It was in, it was in the evening, dark, and I just began to talk to the Lord in a way that I'd never spoke to him before. It was almost like, if those of you who are familiar with psychology, you know what free association is. But it was almost like free association. I just, I just let it all pour out. I, th I said, in essence, to the Lord, uh, you're either going to accept me for what I am and what, on the basis of, what, of my profession of Christ, or, Lord, I'm lost, you know. Yeah. I just kind of put it all on the line. I can't do any better. And surprisingly, <laughs> uh, nothing happened. <laughs> Because he accepted me all along, <laughs> just as I am. And uh, I don't know any other way to put God's grace than to say, uh, I don't care what you've done, uh, if, as long as you keep trusting in the Lord and his grace. His grace is, by my standards at least, pretty unlimited. Yes. And I'm very thankful to uh, try to set an example before 17 employees at our company uh, and try to fulfill that mission. And uh, that's all I have to say. Thank you, Gary. I personally watched Gary live that out as he's been a client about Radio Network. Uh, I want to let you know also, uh, not, a, not only do our award winners get a, an attractive plaque, but they also get a $100 gift card to the Yellow Rose Theater, if you've ever been there, it's kind of a cool place, so enjoy that, Gary. Yep. What do Dan and I get? Do we get anything? Not Nothing? for you, I'm okay. sorry. Yeah. I figured, once again. That's normal. Well, you know, I, these <laughs> awards are all so important, Dan. 
But, you know, I, the businessmen and the statesmen, I think, are, are even more significant to some degree than, than yeah. pastors because everybody expects a pastor to be doing something for the Lord. But think about this. You know, when we do our pastor camps, we just completed yeah. our 14th up in Coeur d'Alene Resort in Coeur d'Alene, Idaho. We've trained over 1,400 pastors literally yeah. from Maine to Southern California, That's right. from uh, Michigan to, to Houston, and from now Washington to Miami. We've literally mm -hmm. got graduates from all across the country. And we start with these pastors with this question. We ask, what part of your life is Jesus not the Lord over? And then we follow that up with it's only those topics that are you're not supposed to be preaching and teaching and making disciples about in <laughs> church. But if Jesus is the Lord of all of our lives, then quite frankly, it shouldn't be bring your Bible to work day where people recognize that we're Christians. Christian businessmen and women should be those of the utmost character and integrity. That's right. Christian employees should be the hardest working, most honest in the entire workforce. Our ethics should be second to none. Our, our sexual proclivity should be without question brought into obedience to what the Lord has described for us. Our families should look different. Our, our children should behave differently. If Jesus, quite frankly, our economics should be different. You know, we're reading through the Bible. Again, we read through it twice a year. Uh, at the church, and it's amazing how every other proverb deals with budgeting or being a slacker. And the reality is, you know, Christianity is not blind faith. Christianity is either true or it isn't. And if the, re if the, if the tomb is empty, then Jesus is the Lord. Yeah. And we've all got one decision to make with that. We can either, like with Herod Agrippa, say, no, almost, Apostle Paul, almost, you persuade us me, but it was too much of a price to pay. Or you can, like with Doubting Thomas, when faced with the evidence of the resurrection, fall on your knees and cry out, my Lord and my God. But understand, that confession of faith is just like getting married. That's the beginning, not the end. We don't earn salvation, not even one inch. But the term Christian means a follower of Christ. We should be followers of Christ in every area of life, whether it be our budgeting, our raising our children, how we treat each other as husband and wife, quite frankly, how we handle the realm of politics and being yeah. a statesman, yeah. which leads us to this next yeah. award. Yeah, so I have the privilege of presenting the Statesman of the Year Award and having served in the legislature alongside Sally Kern, I know what a challenge this is. Not only from the perspective of setting aside um, a career and other things sometimes for many months, sometimes all 12 months out of the year, but the challenge of being there and trying to fight through and get good things done. Over the years, powers that be have created systems where you have to work and jump through loopholes and all kinds of things to do actually what you said you were going there to do. So I know the challenges and that's why I'm particularly honored to present the Statesman of the Year Award. Let me tell you what it says on the plaque. It says, for your commitment to protecting the civil and religious liberties of all Oklahomans, for your efforts to protect the preborn, for your tireless work to provide school choice to all Oklahoma families, and for applying biblical principles to Oklahoma government in an exemplary and winsome way, thereby acting as salt and light, we honor the Christian Statesman, and this year's uh, recipient is Senator Shane Jett. So, Brother Jett, if you would come, my friend. I know that you're going to be speaking in just a moment, but uh, you may have a few words, but we want, to, we want to present this to you. Thank you so much for your faithful service, my friend. Well, I would like to say thank you very much for the award. Bot Radio Network has been a tremendous part of the Jet family. Uh, growing up with, uh, with my dad as a mechanic, and when, we were, when the radio was playing, it was Bot Radio Network. Unless I was on my bicycle heading to Napa Auto Parts store to get a part, we were listening and being blessed. And a lot of the conversations that my dad and I had 
I remember hearing a few days before where Bot Radio Network was on a program. And so my dad and I grew together in the Lord as we were ministered by Bot Radio Network. So my dad is here. His wife, Beverly, are here. Uh, my wife, Anna, to their right, if y'all wave. <laughs> my daughters, Raquel, Esther, and Sarah, are here. And at our table is uh, Pastor Wilkes and his wife, Sandra Wilkes, and they pastor church there in Shawnee. Um, all of this is, is a huge honor to be able to represent Christian faith, Christian principles at the legislature because we're not there to represent businesses. We're not there to represent special interest. Yeah. There's one group of people that we represent, and that's the taxpayers that get forgotten. And if we go up there and start representing businesses, we are acting as a lobbyist yep, that's right. instead of representing you. So Good what I love about, and one of, the, one of the programs I especially loved about Bot Radio Network was focus on the family. And so this, this award uh, being presented to me means tremendous deal because my focus this time around in the legislature is laser focus on the family and standing up for Christian values because we are under attack and where sin doth abound, the grace of God does that much more abound. And so I said, I'm not here to make friends. I have friends back in the district. I'm making sure that I'm protecting their pocketbook and protecting yeah. their children in schools and in public spaces to make sure that they can go back safe to their family. So thank you so much for the opportunity to represent the values that Bot has been preaching for so many years. Bless you. And our final recognition will be for Pastor of the Year. And the plaque says this. Now, that goes, okay. I, 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 I didn't go in your pocket. Joseph has got it. Yeah, got to watch these guys. Whenever somebody no flies trust. that Christian flag no too high, you always got to watch them around money. Yeah, no, I'm just kidding. All right, for, the, for leading his church to be mission-minded and sending out mission groups nationally and internationally each year, for preaching the word and standing on the truth unapologetically and preaching on difficult topics even when it is counterculture, for shepherding his people and always being available to his congregation and tirelessly ministering to families, we are proud to name Bill Hulse as our 2022 Pastor of the Year. Bill. See, when you loan us your building, this is the kind of recognition that you get. God bless you, brother. That's a first. Well, I just want to say that uh, the prize for the pastor of the year is actually, and I'll bring it to you, Bill. It's actually a, a small Branson trip package. Yeah. Yeah. And now we just heard from him a moment ago, but actually in our itinerary, we have a few words from State Senator Shane Jett as our special guest addresses pastors. So Senator Jett, if you would, make your way back up to the stage. Hello again. I am so delighted to be here. Bot Radio Network, as I pointed out earlier, is, has a tremendous impact on the world for, in shining the light of Jesus Christ. Growing up, listening to Bot Radio Network, being part of a local community church, um, probably about the age of 12, I, I asked that I would get 100 Gideon Bibles as a birthday present so I could give those out. And I found out then uh, you had to be 21 to join the Gideons. So at the age of 21 at Oklahoma Baptist University, I joined the Gideons. And uh, I was, I think, the youngest Gideon at that time. I've been in since 1995, so going on uh, 27, 28 years as a Gideon. And we do an annual pastor appreciation banquet 
uh, there in Pottawatomie County and also in Oklahoma City. So whenever they asked me to come up and say, would you be part of a pastor appreciation banquet? Nothing pleases me more than to tell the people who love on me and my family, who love on the community, who lay down your life and give your life so that you can minister to those who are in crises, to tell you thank you and tell you we love you because you've been loving on us. Nothing makes me happier. I love you. I appreciate you. I thank you for the pastors in this room who have ministered to me, who God has divinely appointed to come and give me a time of stress or a time of despair. That word, the word that is like the balm of Gilead, the, a word fitly spoken is like pitchers of gold and apples of silver. This is your ministry, and you make Oklahoma better one family in crises at a time. Thank you. Here is one thing that I've discovered. As a House member 15, 18 years ago, and then being elected in 2020, reaffirms it, is whenever a family is in crises, there's the three P's of family crises. They call their pastor, they call the police, and they call their politician. That's right. And, and I, I found there's a new phrase. Have you ever heard of the six-word prayer? Oh, God, oh, God, oh, God. That's usually what triggers those three P calls, right? And just the other day, I was, it, was, it was 4 a.m., and I, I, just, I was felt just turmoil in my soul. And it was, I would, had already prayed the oh, God, oh, God, oh, God prayer, the six-word prayer. And I got on my face in my living room. I said, God, help me help. Help me help. Because when people call and price, they think that we have the power to solve their problems, but we don't. We don't have the amount of power that people imagine we do. So when they call out to us for prayer, we point them to Jesus Christ. Amen? And that's why we're here today. I am honored to be here. I'm delighted to be here. I have my speech written on the palm of my hand. Because of all the speeches I've ever given, I have never yet left my hand at the table <laughs> when I went up to speech. <laughs> so the three P's of, of family crisis is something that you live on a daily basis. How many of you have been in ministry for over 10 years? Look around the room. Thank you. We love you. How many have been here for more than 20 years? How many more than 30 Look at you. I've been in that three P's of crisis, dealing with families in crisis in my home, in my living room, praying with them, dealing with them for two years. I'm exhausted. <laughs> so thank you for what you do. We couldn't do this without you. You are why we're here today. And what I want to say is I couldn't do what I do at the state capitol without the pastors in my Rolodex. That's an old term. Millennials don't even know what that is. <laughs> and I literally have a, I have 11,290 contacts in my phone, which means I have to know who I'm looking for before I can find them. So I use little keywords, and in them is pastor, reverend, and prayer warrior. Because I know I cannot do the task ahead of me without the prayer the support of God Almighty, and the pastors who light up the phone when unrighteousness is being un unveiled, they pick up the phone, they call their senator, their state legislator, and hold them accountable according to biblical principles. See, the reason why there's this, this wave across the United States of trying to tear down families is because they know the family is the structure that this nation rests upon, and the ministry that you do is to build up and edify and bless and make stronger families. We couldn't do what you, we do without you. This nation wouldn't be what it is without you. And here's the final thought. The reason why the United States form of government is so powerful and the reason why it has stood as a republic for over 200 years is because it is built on biblical principles. Because if you look at the sons of Zebedee when their mother came to Jesus Christ and said, when you come into your kingdom... I want one boy on the right, and I want one boy on the left. And what did Jesus say? It is the Gentiles that lord it over one another.
But if you want to be great in my kingdom, you have to serve. And that is a system of American government. You want to be president? Ask the people, can I serve you for four years? And we'll give you permission if we like your service. You want to be a U.S. senator? Ask the people for permission. We'll serve you. It's a biblical model. It is ordained by God. And the reason why people are trying to tear it down is because it repudiates the lie of satanic bondage. I'm going to repeat that. It repudiates the lie of satanic bondage. And here is the reason why Satan wants to go after and the forces of evil want to go after our Constitution is because our Constitution, the First Amendment, guarantees our right to fulfill the great commission of preaching the gospel. The first half of the First Amendment is dedicated to freedom of speech, freedom of religion, freedom to assemble, freedom of the press, and freedom to petition the government for redress of grievance. Those first three guarantees our right to preach the gospel. And that's why, pastors, it's so vital from behind your pulpit to encourage your parishioners to be engaged, to be involved, to hold us accountable to represent their values, because if the First Amendment goes, your churches fall with it. So again, I can't express how much I appreciate what you do as warriors for the cross, as the balm of Gilead in your community, and for the opportunity to join with Bot Radio Network and tell you thank you for what you do. Thank you for loving on us when we're in crises. We love you, and we honor you today. Thank you. Well, answers written on the palm of your hand are how I got through college. Please welcome to the stage again for some more uh, Christian music, A New Beginning. Oh. Well, as we're getting set up here, just want to let you know that uh, we do uh, most of our ministry in nursing homes, in uh, retirement centers. We are willing to do free concerts for fundraisers. If you're wanting to do a fundraiser in your church and you want some music to, co to go uh, along with your uh, program, we'll be glad to come. And uh, we have uh, some uh, flyers out there if you'd like to have uh, our information. But uh, we do all this for Jesus. It's just uh, an honor to be able to come and, and, and glorify him with music. So we want to sing a song now that uh, we hope will we'll get you ready to receive the, uh, the message that is about to come. We have a table back there, and I have some CDs there that are free. If you'd like to have one, feel free to take it. When peace like a river attended my soul, when so
wonderful, wonderful. Big round of applause, that is outstanding. Well, as I introduce our keynote speaker, he's a longtime friend, but let me remind you, we will have drawings right at the end before we dismiss. Now, I can't verify this, but I heard a rumor that there could be as much as $5,000 in cash given away at the end of this. Now, that's just a rumor that I'm starting, but <laughs> you have to be present to win. You know, as pastors, we don't have pastors that we can go to. You know, we, we may have a relationship with one another, and we've got someone that we can kind of lean on, but generally, you know, everybody in the church wants to come see us when they've got uh, something that's troubling them or a crisis or perhaps some difficulty even at home. And, you know, as you study the Bible, you recognize that these great men and women of God that are recorded in biblical history, you know, you, you see, we, we have a tendency of wanting to make them like superheroes. But the reality is they were just men. They were just women, descendants of Adam, with the same faults, the same biases, the same jealousies, the same temperament, uh, the same fears that we have. And this gentleman that uh, I'm about to introduce to give our keynote uh, was in the banking business, actually was the founder and president of Bank Two, uh, been a long time committed Christian, but he has a tremendous ministry in North Edmond called uh, Tall Oaks Coaching. Uh, and Ross is there to visit, he's there to counsel, he's there to, to help in, in any number of ways, but he is basically a, a life coach or a pastor for pastors that need someone to talk to. Because if you come talk to Dan Fisher, he's just going to Facebook it all over the world, and nobody's going to be nobody's secret. Ross, at least, can keep it a secret. Please welcome to the stage my friend Ross Hill. coming up the stairs, um, that was because Paul tackled me. <laughs> I used to attend a luncheon that Paul had at uh, Wind Hills Country Club, and I would go, he, he let everybody introduce themselves, and he said, um, if you take a breath, I'm coming after you. Well, you want Paul coming after you? No way. <laughs> and I would introduce myself as Ross Hill, pastor of Bank Two. And you should have, the, the, the next guy, Paul, you probably remember this, but the next guy behind me would stand up and start to say who he was, and then he'd, he'd look at me, the what? <laughs> the pastor of Bank Two. What a privilege to be here today. I admire every one of you. Thank God for what you do and what you stand for. <clears throat> I think there's a photograph of a lion behind me. This photograph is in our offices at Tall Oaks Coaching. I don't know how clearly you can see his nose, but take a look at his nose. What do you see on his nose? See anything? Anybody see anything? I'm sorry? Yeah, pink place. Anybody else see anything? What was it? Scars. Yeah, if you look on the right side, I think his nose was even broken. There's a little protrusion, like a friend of mine's nose that was broken. And um, he's the king of the jungle. The king of the jungle has been attacked. And you know, I've, I've worked with leaders for over 50 years. And I've been a leader in the church and a leader in business. And one thing I know for sure is all leaders are attacked. We all have bumps and bruises and wounds and scars yeah. from those attacks. Yeah. Let's watch this video.
As they mature, young males begin to explore the boundaries of the pride's territory. Red has ventured out alone. straight into the middle of the hyena clam. <laughs> He's trapped by over 20 of them. to fight them all at once. has heard the commotion. is too much to take on. Red is lucky. It's amazing. Twenty hyenas attacking the king of the jungle run for cover when another one shows up and walks with him. About three years after I received an education from Cincinnati Bible Seminary in Cincinnati, Ohio, go Cincinnati Reds, <laughs> Big Red Machine, Johnny Bench, all that good stuff. I moved to Oklahoma and uh, was pastoring, and about three years into pastoring, I decided to plant a church. Back in those days, we didn't call it plant a church. I think we just said start a church. And uh, we started with five couples in a living room of one of, the, one of those five couples. And we very quickly had to move to the local junior college, to the student union there, because we were growing so quickly. And people were being saved nearly every weekend. And we were baptizing them in the city lake for everybody to see every weekend, to be a witness to them. And quickly we grew to 200 people. And we bought five acres of land. And we built a building. And we had a master plan for the, for the property. 
In the evening, we dedicated, we dedicated the building. I asked one of my pastor friends to come and speak, and Tom just did an outstanding job dedicating the building to the glory of God. It was so awesome. And uh, I went home after the service. I think I was on one of the greatest spiritual highs I've er had ever experienced at that time. And uh, the door bell rang, and it was Tom. It was about an hour after church. And he was standing on my stoop and said, hey, can I come in? I need to visit with you for a minute. Well, he lives a couple hours away. I thought he had already gone back home. And he said, hey, the, the uh, elders of the church asked to meet with me after church. And I was totally stunned because I was one of those guys. But I wasn't there. <laughs> What's going on? A secret meeting? Really? The men told Tom that I didn't know how to manage money and I was spending the church into bankruptcy. And they even gave him a financial statement that proved their point. And I'm looking at that financial statement and I'm going like, I've never seen this before. Not that one. <laughs> and... Uh, so I went from a spiritual high to the depths of depression faster than a speeding bullet. This generation that's in here can remember that phrase from TV, I think. I don't think I slept a wink that night. It hurt me so bad to think that they'd have a secret meeting without me. And, and I was... I was just puzzled. I couldn't figure it out. I told Tom, I said, nobody has ever mentioned a word of any of this to me. What on earth is going on? I was scared. I was dismayed. I was dumbfounded. And I was fighting mad. I was. Imagine running into Paul Blair on the football field. That kind of mad. It caught me wholly off guard. And I was embarrassed in front of my friend. Somebody I looked up to as a pastor. I was just a young, dumb, punk kid. Wet behind the ears. And I looked up to this man. That was hard. Immediately the next morning, I went to work. I'd worked my way through the Federal Reserve Bank of Cincinnati, worked my way through college there. I called my home church. They'd offered $500 of support a month, and that was a lot of money back in that time. And I said, hey, I know you know we bought land and built a building, but we're still inside the, the time period that you were going to donate to the church, and I haven't seen your check the last 90 days. Have, have you uh, sent those in? It's okay if you decided we don't need it. And they said, no, Ross, we know you need it. You need it more now for the building to pay for. We're sending the checks every month. I said, well, could you fax the front and back of the last 90 days to me? And most of you in, the, in here can remember the onion skin fax. Yeah. They were rolled up so tight you could barely read them. You had to have some weights on either end to be, <laughs> to be able to look at it. Sure enough, they'd sent the checks. Interestingly, though, the financial statement said we had accounts at First National Bank, and I knew about those accounts. But we, 
the endorsement on the back of the check said Citizens National Bank. So I went down to Citizens. Had a friend there. Visited with him for a little bit. And I said, hey, um, would you mind, could you get me the last 90 days of bank statements for the church? I, I don't have them. He said, sure, Ross. And he gave them to me. It never happened today because I wasn't a signer on the account then. It shouldn't have happened then, but it would never happen today because things have been tightened up in banks. He gave them to me, and I called a special meeting of the board. And I slid their financial statement over to them, and I said, is this right? Well, yeah, it's right. I said, really? Well, what about these statements? that said the name of the church, the account. How come it's not on this financial statement? It had tens of thousands of dollars in it. As I remember it, 25000 or more. That was a lot of money in 1980. And a lot of money they weren't reporting on the financial statements to make it look like we were spending every dime. Or, as they said, I was. So I asked them to explain it to me, but they didn't. They just fired me. So you're fired. Get out of here. You're done. Go on. I said, I'll see you in church on Sunday. I was young. Yeah. I was dumb. I was wet behind the ears. I go to church on Sunday. I'm loaded for bear. I got copies of their statement. I got copies of the bank statements. I hand those out to everybody and uh, explain to them what had happened. And one guy stood up for me. He wasn't even a Christian. <laughs> I've led his wife to the Lord and his two daughters. <sighs> but not him. He's the guy that stood up. He's the guy that spoke for me. Everybody else was. Like they didn't know what to do. Yeah. And I admit most of them were young Christians, but man. You lead somebody to the Lord, you think they'd at least stand up for you, right? Yeah. I left that church that morning as a young wet behind the ear, inexperienced pastor, oh, fired pastor. <laughs> Left that out of the story. I had two little kids and one in the hopper. And Christmas was right around the corner. <clears throat> no severance pay. Not a dime. Man, I was, I was crushed. I mean, really crushed. I was alone. It's the worst feeling in the world. Yeah. And every pastor survey says, you guys feel all alone. No fun at all. No fun. No one to help me sort it out. No one to talk to except my pregnant wife. Put, put more on her. More. Yeah, that's a great time for her. I clung to this verse. You guys know it. As for you, you meant to harm me. But God, yeah. God intended to use it for good in me. Yeah. Yeah. Seven years later, get the irony of this. Seven years later, after I was accused falsely of spending all the money and not knowing how to, become, uh, how to budget money, 
I become the youngest president of a bank in Oklahoma. <laughs> and one board made a bad decision or the other one did. I'm not sure who. God's humor. God's humor. It's amazing. I never wanted to be a banker. Never did. We built, when we started Bank 2, we dedicated it to the Lord. And we built it into an incredible financial institution. And uh, we helped churches, some of your churches here. We helped you get out of financial binds. Some of you know me well from that <laughs> standpoint. Helped other churches across the country. God used that bank on a national basis. It was amazing. In 98, well, let me go back. In 88, eight years after God had planted some seeds in me from that horrible experience, seeds he promised he was going to turn to good. I, I thought he'd already done it. Eight years after that horrible day, God gave me a dream. It was amazing. And ten years after he gave me the dream, I coached my first pastor. South Carolina. And then Washington, D.C. And then Fredericksburg, Maryland. And then... Um, because of Tom's dad, I coached the pastor that took over Jack Kyle's church when it got in so much trouble. And then I was out in Phoenix coaching a guy that led the largest Lutheran church to move away from the Lutheran denomination. And they were trying to get his building, and I helped him figure out how to not let that happen and to preserve the building and his ministry. It was amazing, but I said to God, I said, Lord, is there not anybody in Oklahoma City that could use my help? <laughs> I mean, come on. It was amazing. Door knock. Tom, I hope this is okay, but I didn't ask you, but Tom's dad, Jim, came knocking on my door. I met Jim when I was in Cincinnati. To, if he was alive today we'd still be debating the year we met. <laughs> but I knew, I know when we met. We met at John Rawlings Church in Cincinnati, Ohio, and Jim, Jim Vineyard was the bus minister at that church for a while. Or he was there to do a conference, I can't remember which. But anyhow, he comes knocking on my door. And I get a chance to help Jim. What a blessing that was. In 2018, after retiring from banking, I went to see some guys. And, uh, well, excuse me, 2017. Went to see some guys, talk about what I should do in my fourth quarter. And, and the guy said, you need to coach pastor. And I was already planning on coaching executives, and I was trying to figure out how I could coach more pastors, too. And God got my attention. And then 2018, a miracle, a miracle happened. I don't know what your definition of a miracle is, but I think this is one. Didn't even know the guy. Never met him. I heard him speak. Walked up to him and said, if you're serious about that pastor thing, here's my card. I coach pastors. Give me a call. He goes, whoa, wait a minute, wait a minute. Here's my card. You call me. Well, I called him. And then I sat down with him. And he had a wonderful conversation, but he didn't really have full awareness of what was going on in pastors' lives. But he had a good start. And he asked me to go do some research about it. 
So I, I went home, and where's my wife? This little tiny thing over here is my wife. She got stuck with me. She says, you're going to do that research, <laughs> right? You're going to do that research, right? Yeah. He's got 6,000 people in his business. He doesn't need me to do research. He can do it. Full of pride. God has a way of humbling you. PayPal sends me a notice saying, we're going to refund this money if you don't take care of this matter. And I'm going, what? And I scroll down to see that this guy had bought a book and I hadn't fulfilled the order. I, I'd missed it. <laughs> I pay attention to that quite frankly every day. I think my eyes were blinded. So I immediately call him and I, I, I refund the money. I call him. I say, I'm bringing my book to you. I'm bringing an apology note. I'm bringing you proof of the refund. And they go, oh, that's all right. We, we got it from Amazon. Don't worry about it. He's already reading it. Amazon, I make 92 cents when you buy it <laughs> from Amazon. I make about 10 bucks when you buy it on my website. It's a killer. But the guy called me a couple of weeks later and said, hey, let's have lunch. So I go have lunch with him, and he says, I'm going to ask you to do something we've never, ever asked anybody to do. I want you to write a proposal for us to give to your ministry. Really? Yeah, we've never ever. We get so many requests, we've never asked anyone to write one, but I want you to write one. Well, I started writing one. I did that research <laughs> to prove what was going on. Took me a couple months. I checked back with him, make sure I was doing what he wanted. I show up in August. I go, here's, here's the thumb drive with the PowerPoint, and, and here's the hard copy of the PowerPoint, and here's all the documentation behind it. And uh, look it over. If you got any questions, holler at me. And he takes it all and he shoves it back across the desk to me. And he says, I'm not going to present it. <laughs> Are you kidding me? He goes, no, you're going to. I said, what? I said, you said you were going to. Yeah, but we've already changed history. We might as well go all the way. You're going to be the first one to ever present to the family. And I said, well, why? He said, because my family needs to see your passion for pastors. Yeah. God had it all planned out decades ago. <laughs> Since that time, Paul Oaks Coaching has grown to have 200 ministry leaders and spouses as clients of ours. Wow. And they don't pay a penny for it. Wow. It's all paid for by people that love you. <laughs> people that love you. They're investing a ton of money wow. to get that done. We have 21 coaches from seven, uh, we have clients from 17 different denominations. From every ethnic group in America. We have, 20, um, we have 23 coaches from seven different denominations. We're not there about denominations. We're there about you. Yeah. We're there to serve you, to love on you. Remember the verse I claimed over and over again, what men mean for evil? God turns the good 42 years 42 years from getting fired as a pastor <laughs> carrying that baggage around it's almost 40 years to the day God's sense of humor again we should pitch our tent on what God says. Amen. I'm going to tell you what he said in Genesis. And one of my pastor friends go, boy, you're pretty brave. It's not good for man to be alone. Hmm. Well, Moses had Aaron. Yep. David had Jonathan. Joshua had Caleb. 
one of my kids is named Caleb. Elijah had Elijah. Ruth had Naomi. Jesus had Peter, James, and John in his inner circle. Miriam had Martha. James and John had John. Saul had Samuel. Paul had Silas. Ministry leaders should never, ever be alone. Yeah, We're a sitting duck for every sin That's right. known to humanity when we're all alone. We're right in the crosshairs of Satan when we're all alone. Jesus sent the 12 out two by two. He sent the 72 out two by two. The Lord knows what he's doing. We all need a confidant in our lives. Every one of us need that. Somebody that will walk with us. Someone that will love us in spite of our sin. The Bible says we should confess our sins one to another. Where do you do that, pastor? Where do you do that if you're his spouse? Where's the safe place? Well, I can tell you there's one here in town. There's one here. There's white sound machines. Our offices are insulated. Nobody can hear anything. Sometimes people have hearing aids. They say, can we turn that white sound machine off? I said, no. Just put something over it. <laughs> we don't want anybody to hear you. We want you to have a safe place. Amen. A place where somebody will listen to you. Comes up in all the surveys. Nobody listens to me. Pastors are saying, nobody listens to me. Well, they speak every day, but nobody's listening to them. They speak every Sunday, but they feel like nobody's listening to them. I think what they're really saying, nobody really listens to what's going on in my life yeah. and maybe even cares. We need someone to hold us up, someone to encourage us, someone to help us, to point out our blind spots in love. Man, you can't see your blind spots. Yeah. Tiger Woods has always had a coach. He's the most prolific golfer of our day. And I ask lots of people, Who's, who knows golf better? Who's the better golfer, Tiger Woods or his coach? And a lot of them say his coach. And I say, really? What major golf tournaments has he won? Do you know what he looks like? And they go, oh, well, Tiger, why does he have a coach? Because Tiger can't see what he can't see. Yeah. He can't see what he's doing when he's swinging a golf club 130 miles an hour. But his coach can. Yeah. And his coach loves him and shows him and instructs him how to make that change. Amen. That's what we do. We need somebody in our lives that will tell us things nobody else will tell us. I tell leaders all the time, you're the most powerful person in the room. Most executives go, yeah, yeah, you're right. <laughs> Not all of them, fortunately. Every pastor goes, no, oh, yeah, no, yes, yes, you are. Those business leaders you're talking to, they need you. They need to hear what's on your mind. They need you to give them instruction. They need you to point out their blind spots and help them through life too. They need you to tell them what nobody else will tell them. If you don't tell them, who else is going to? They love you. They believe in you. And you can do it. You need someone to help. We need someone to help us, to love us, to disciple us, to, to mentor us, to appreciate us, to pray for us and believe in us and to protect us. And that's what we do. We need someone in our lives that gets us. Every coach at Tall Oaks Coaching is an ordained minister or married to one. 
They've been in your shoes. They know what's going on. They've been there. They felt your pain. Listen to me for just a minute. Listen. Listen to this. Your church needs you. Your people, they need you. Oklahoma City needs you. Oklahoma needs you. My goodness, does our country not need you? In the worst way. In the worst way. Some of you might disagree with this statement, but it's true. God needs you. Needs you right where you're at. Needs you doing what you're doing. The kingdom of God needs that. A healthy pastor produces a healthy church. A healthy church should help produce a healthy community. That's how it works. What you do What you do is absolutely vital. Absolutely. Without question. Vital. Never, ever walk alone. Don't do it. We have to camp out on what Jesus said. Jesus said, remain in me. John 15 11 times Jesus uses that word remain in him or for him to remain in you. As a pastor, I was filled with all kinds of work, overworked. Everything was on me as a church planner. It doesn't matter if you're a church planner or a uh, mega church pastor. The number one problem you guys have, no margin in your schedule. Guess what? All those guys and gals that own businesses in your, in your church, you think you don't have things in common? Go ask them to see their calendar. They had no margin in theirs either. So because there's no margin, what do we do? Well, we wear the brand Got it on our hat, got it tattooed on our forehead. Some of us have a big old cross on our chest, one of my kids do. We wear the brand, got it on the back of our sweatshirts. We wear the brand, but maybe you are like me, totally empty on the inside. No relationship with Jesus. It got so bad in the 90s, I was out of the ministry by then, I was chairman of the board of my church and preaching when my pastor would go on vacation or get sick or whatever, doing youth groups, teaching Sunday school, praying over communion, praying over offerings. I was as hollow as the tree that fell over on my property today. (laughs) Nothing there. It was so bad I started questioning my own salvation. It was sad. But I wore the brand. I was a Christian. That's not the brand we need to wear. I carried a Bible. I tithed. I was faithful to church. I wore the brand. It's not the brand we need to wear. I was totally empty on the inside. I coach around the idea of slow down to speed up. And I started spending some slow time in the Word. In fact, it takes 3.2 years to read the Bible cover to cover. It takes about half that to read two chapters a day. That time has turned my entire life around. And I came up with a little seven-step program that goes with that. And I call it the 40-day challenge. And I wrote about it in my book because it changed everything about me. And it's changed literally thousands of other Christians' lives 
that weren't in relationship with Jesus. And it's changed a ton of pastors' lives. Jesus said, love him with all of our heart, all of our soul, all of our mind, and all of our strength. Well, Dane, how are you doing loving your wife? Do you spend any time with her? Or you just kind of wave at her and go by? Huh? Does he spend time with you? Yeah. Pretty hard to love someone with all of your heart, soul, mind, and strength if you're not spending a lot of time with them. We rationalize, well, I, I spend all this time getting ready to preach and teach and do Sunday school and uh, uh, funerals and weddings and all kinds of stuff. I know you do. Satan's using that to keep you from spending time in relationship with Jesus. Yeah. You're burning up your life for what? No relationship with Jesus? He wouldn't want that. John 15, and I know I'm a little over time, but bear with me for just a minute. John 15, I won't read the whole thing. He says, remain in me as I also remain in you. No branch can be fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. If you do not remain in me, you're like a branch that's thrown away and withers. That was me. That was me. Yeah, I did all that other stuff. I didn't have a relationship. I didn't have a relationship with Jesus. Well, I, won't, I won't finish that chapter. You guys can do it. You probably, some of you have it memorized. We got to live it. We got to live it. We've got to live it. Don't be like me. Don't be like I was. Spend some time with the Lord every day. Every day. I'm not driving down the road. Alone. Not looking at your iPhone. Alone. Not where your computer can be heard. Alone. Spend some time with Jesus. Get to know Him. Let Him come into you. You into Him. Be like John talks about in chapter 15. Go read it and refresh that in your mind today. If you've already got Jesus and you're thinking you got a good enough relationship with him, maybe you do. But I wrote about how to have a great one in my book. And I've given a book to every person here today. Some of you have already picked it up, but they're out there on the table. Don't leave without it. It's free. It's for you. It's my way of how I got close to Jesus. It's worked for a lot of people. Maybe it'll work for you. I wrote that book about my journey back to the Lord. I wrote it five times. Could never get it to be something that wasn't mechanical, like do this, number one, read a set of instructions. <laughs> my book's not the law, it's my story about how I came back to the Lord. I think it might bless you. Thank you for letting me be here. I asked the Lord that. <clears throat> you would leave here greatly encouraged and seeking him first in your life today and forevermore. Thank you so much. Thanks, Bot Radio, for having this great event. Remember what I said. What you do is absolutely vital. God bless you.
God bless you. Thank you, Ross. And I encourage you to make sure and get Ross's information. You know, I honestly, when I was uh, c coming back from my cancer, my radiation and chemotherapy things, I actually went in and visited with him a few times. Uh, you know, he's just a friend that you can talk to. You know, you can't always talk to people in your church because you're the pastor yeah. and they're, you're just viewed differently. But it's, uh, it's very uh, comforting and it's necessary that we have someone that we can go and just and talk with and visit with and receive counsel from. Go ahead. You know, I, I know we need to get on and get finished, but just a, a personal privilege here for a second. You know, I pastored a fairly large church for 23 years. It wasn't large when I went there, but God had done some pretty cool stuff. And uh, they had been with me all the way. Go get them, Dan. Go get them. Running for office. Yeah, this is what we need you to do. Go do that. Doing black robe all over the country. Yeah, go for it. Go for it. All those things. I got up into that to my eyeballs. And my elders did what yours did. They said, you know what? I think we're going to switch horses. And you're not going to be on it. And after 23 years, I found myself feeling like I was at the end of the ministry. What do you do after that? You're in your 50s, and you've just been told you're not needed anymore. And you've given your life. So I know what he's talking about. I had every outward appearance of being incredibly successful. But you know, when you get to that end, you don't know what in the world you're going to do. And I have found that even when the worst thing that you can possibly imagine happens to you as a pastor, sometimes God uses that to liberate you in ways you would have never imagined. I am freer to do ministry today than I've ever been in my life. Amen. God is doing some really cool things. So thank you, brother, for that word. That is such an important and timely message. Thank you for what you do. God bless you. God bless you. All right, Joseph, we've got a couple items to give away here. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Drawing. You've got numbers over there. I am. A, I have the random number random generator. Num oh. random you, number can't, generator. you can't generate a random number from a machine, apparently. This one uses atmospheric noise, so it's truly random. Wow. Very good. Okay, let me wow. see. Okay, this one is <laughs> not $5,000. Okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> this is a uh, $100 gift certificate to the Yellow Rose Theater in Guthrie. Is that correct? The, uh, it's in oh, Moore. Okay, in Moore. okay. This Other is the direction. one. This was the one that's in Moore. Okay, great. <laughs> the Yellow Rose Theater in Moore. Okay, yeah. And the number is. It is. Must be present to win. Must be present. Eighty-three. Eighty-three. Check your number name 83. tag. The numbers are on your name Who tag. Who is eighty-three? Oh, it's on your. Hey, how Woo. about that? We have a winner right here. All right, this too is, nope, this isn't the cash either. This is also a $100 gift certificate to the Arlo's Theater. This is the one that's in more as well. More, okay, yeah. right, there you go. That's and the, the check is in your jacket pocket, right? Paul? Yeah, uh, yeah, that, that's it. I've okay. got it. I've won that already. I, <laughs> I drew my uh, number earlier. That's great. How fortunate for you. <laughs> how amazing. Here we go. 31. 31. <laughs> 31, all right, here we go. Joseph, is that all the damage that we can do for one day? One more thing I wanted to say on your tables, you have, oh, first of all, as you walk out, you'll be handed a bag with some gifts in it, and Ross's book is available to you as well. Mm. And also on your tables, you'll see a, a couple of these on there. Not everybody might be interested, but these each one of these is a ticket to the Oklahoma City train show coming up first part of November. If you've never been there, it's 100,000 feet of operating model trains. Wow. I'm a kid at heart. I just stand there and watch the things, you know, <laughs> take your grandkids. You only yeah. need a ticket if they're 12 and older. So grab the ones if you want, or if you want to wander around and pick up the unused ones at tables there as well, that'll work. So <laughs> Joseph, before you close in prayer, we do have one other drawing. Ross Hill's phone, okay? <laughs> yeah, we're so we're going to take bids on and that. And then we have Ross's Bible, okay? Hey, how about that? Good, Good notes in there. <laughs> All right. All right, after that, I think we need some prayer. <laughs> Father in heaven. Every person in here seeks to glorify you, and I pray that you would 
stand against the enemy that stands in our way of doing that. I pray that we would, as Ross talked about, abide in the vine, that you would give us no other choice, that you would make that such a, a fruitful way to live so close to you so that we could do your business on this planet, building your kingdom, fulfilling the Great Commission as you've commanded us. Bless everyone in here as they go, every person, every family member, every church that's represented, and may your will be done and bring us back next year, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.